My goodness me, you can tell by the light in here that we have started slightly gloomier today. Um, it feels very, very autumnal. I've actually just got back from Pilates and um, it was dark, fully dark when I got up, which was very strange, but also at the moment rather lovely, but I'm sure that will get old very, very quickly. Um, I've got back and it was a really, really good class. Like, honestly, we did so much and covered so much, both like in chatting, but also in like exercises and stretches and things like that. Um, again, I didn't take you with me because I know that I've obviously got quite carried away and excited about Pilates. So I'll show you what we're doing in a few weeks. I'll also show you my outfit because I loved my outfit for Pilates today. But I am about to jump on a call because I'm having a Farrow and Ball colour consultation. Um, as you know, we're decorating downstairs. And one of the things that I'm trying to do as much as possible is get experts input to help me in making these decisions moving forward. So I booked in for a colour consultation to help me with choosing the right colour for the room. Um, I think that's super important for me because, well, for the rooms, because um, they're in very interesting lighting settings and it's going to be it's quite important for me to get the colours right and I can't mess about with them. So I've been sent this unreal, like, Farrow and Ball colour card. I didn't even know they had these. And so hopefully we're going to find a colour for my office and also the games room. What colour is that? Min Minster Green. Oh, I've never even heard of that one. I really quite like it. What's this one? Farron? No, Dire Haven. Gosh, so many greens I've never heard of from Farrow and Ball. Wow, this is going to be enlightening, I think. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this goes. So anyway, I'm going to jump onto the call now. Where are my emails? There we go. Um, and it's 60 minutes. Gosh, what are we going to cover in that time? Can you see me? No. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Hello? Yeah. Hi. Hello, how are you? <laughs> it was so strange that I've never used this software before. And I was like, hello? <laughs> you know what, me neither. I couldn't be happy to see you. <laughs> no, it was so weird. I, it just came up black and I was like, I don't even know where the controls are. And so I was like, yeah, so strange. But I Exactly, exactly. It's so funny. Thank you so much for joining the call. I'm reaching out to Farrow and Ball. I'm really excited that you love our colours. And I really, I absolutely love all of the ones that you've listed. So that excites me very much. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Good, good. That makes me excited. Um, it's a really interesting space, and it's the last space that we're sort of working on in the house because it's um, it, it's it's always felt a bit strange as a space because it doesn't feel like it's part of the rest of the house. So we've been trying to sort of think how we want it to feel and look because it's very it's always been very echoey and very like disconnected um and i've kind of ground to a halt with things down there we've got the the hallways painted in drop cloth where um drop cloth and treron sit but we also have this which is our archive did it arrive yeah Oh, I love that. And so we've got all of these rooms that now, like our bedroom is just so soft and so cozy. Our living room is like just unbelievable. And I cannot tell you how different that feels from when we first moved in, because when we moved in, it was like cold and 
empty and soulless is the best way I can describe. But it's so hard to see a space that feels soulless, which at the moment my office and the, the games room really does feel like, like that, to almost envision it ever being a space that you will want to actually, because I want it, I hope that this will be a space that I want to go and like sit and read on my own. And in this house, like I've obviously, we've got lovely rooms, the kitchen, the living room, and the, the living room has like a fire. And so when you have a fire, it's like the cozy levels go up a hundred. But I want to somehow be able to make a space that feels so lovely that it doesn't feel like an office at all when it's not being used as an office, that it, it just feels like a really wonderful space. fascinating seeing you hold those two colors next to each other because obviously my my knee jerk with with this room downstairs was like okay so we've got Traron in our ensuite and that's where we saw it and we loved it and now we've put it in the living room and we 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 absolutely love it in the living room so if we love it in those two spaces we might as well just put it in there but seeing what you've just shown me there with these two colors next to each other that would have been an error because it would have felt cold and blue and that's not what I want to create. That's honestly fascinating. My knee jerk was like, just go super dark in there, Lydia, because it's already like a big space, it can handle it. And looking at this, it's like, actually, you're right. We don't need to go dark because you'll just lose any color in the darks of it. You need to go kind of dramatic, but not too dramatic because the shadows and the darkness down there will do the drama for us while still giving Absolutely. us a depth to colour. Absolutely, you hit the nail on the head. I couldn't have said it better myself. It's a colour called Pantalon, and it's not very far underneath Olive. It's about sort of uh, two, eight, ten colours underneath. I've got it, it's gorgeous. Isn't it amazing? It's, it's Gorgeous. We have a colour called Deneen, um, which are, this is not part of your palette, but it's a magical colour. Um, it takes its name from where Denim was first made in France, of Nîmes. And um, it's a bit like a pair of jeans in the sense that you can put it into any space and it looks great with anything. Like you can throw anything on with a pair of jeans and it looks fab. Um, and, and Pantalon is almost like that for these kind of rich, earthy, weighty, and would you um would you colour drench the with the olive? So would you do the ceiling as well as the walls? Could I take you down there and show you them? You yeah, let, let me do that. Hold on. Yeah. I'll take oh, I decided to keep this recording. I wonder if it's for a reason. I think so. We'll stop that. Well, I feel like this is a proper good morning now. Um, I might not be looking more presentable than my last video, but um, I don't care about that. <laughs> um, I am dressed after having been to Pilates this, uh, this morning, um, and I finished my colour appointment with Farron and Ball, and I am over the moon to say that I have finally picked the sort of colour scheme and walls um, and paint colours for the room. I feel so confident and so happy with what we've, um, what Bridget has suggested. Bridget was my colour consultant that I worked with on this. 
and um, I feel so excited now. So I've let Ali know exactly what it is that we're going for. But basically, the colours that we're going for in the club room are olive and pantalon. So this one here is olive and this is pantalon. Now you're gonna look at this and you're gonna think, oh, that's quite light, Lydia. Maybe not this one so much, but this is like a, this, the room is so dark, it's below ground level, it's north facing, and um, these colors will actually appear darker when they're in there. We've also had to consider the type of light that we get in there so that we get the right tone. And I feel so confident and happy with these two color choices i'm over the moon so i've pushed the button as the sugar babes would say and that's going to be happening so pantalon is going to be going on the wall behind the cinema screen and the bar and then we're going to have olive on the wall as you're walking into the room and the wall on the back of the wall, the, the room and on the ceiling as well but then we also have these recesses in the ceiling and in there there's also going to be pantalon so there's going to be a nice amount of depth and it's not just going to be one whitewash but it is going to be a color drench but color drench with like facets so the whole room is going to be painted there's going to be no white ceiling um so very very excited about that the root the, the color scheme for my room now this was a um an error on my part, I did not write in my notes, and this is why if you're going to do the colour consultation, which you can, um, I would suggest putting as much detail in as possible. I completely forgot to put in the design notes that we already had a floor laid, and it's like a terracotta floor. So what has been suggested was maybe a little bit too pink for me. However, Bridget has already revised it, and the colour that we're gonna be going for on the walls is actually gonna be stony ground, which can then be accented with um, like painted cabinetry and woodwork in Treron, which you'll know is a colour that I like anyway. So we've got the colours basically, which means Ali will be over the moon. We've ordered all of the bath furniture for down in the like main family bathroom, which is actually lower ground. Um, we've got the most gorgeous tub. It's gonna. It's obviously gonna be very, very Soho Farmhouse vibes, but um, I'm really, really looking forward to that as well. So we're getting there. It's slow and steady. It may not be done completely ready for um, New Year's this year, judging by where we are now. It's four months. I mean, if I really pulled my finger out, perhaps I could get a sofa. I mean, the bar, maybe. I don't know. Um, rugs and things, I don't know. But we really want to have our annual New Year's Eve party at home. It is so lovely to do it that way and it's so chilled and we kind of set the dress code. I honestly think I'm gonna say like almost like a black tie dress code this year and um, I'm gonna to want to have like people doing drinks and things. I think it's gonna be lovely. Anyway, getting really far ahead now. We are back to normality in the house. Christmas is gone, okay? And I have never been so happy to see the back of Christmas. That was intense. What we did was we, um, we literally, as we were finishing the shoot, the girls on my team who are just the most spectacular girls ever, and I feel so lucky to have them, they were like packing things down because they could see how disrupted I was by the fact that Christmas was up. I was so grateful for the opportunity to, to even shoot this. But as a seasonal, very, very sensitive human being, having Christmas decorations up when it is hot outside was just too much. And I know that there are people in the world that celebrate Christmas in the heat. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm probably going to open up like the most conflicting um, opinions on Christmas time because I know Australian followers and people like that, they will be. But honestly, I used to have Christmas in America growing up and now I look back and it was just not, it's just, there is nothing like a British Christmas in my humble opinion. And so um, it's done. And you will see all the fruits of our labour as well. And I never keep them under wraps because I'm like, no, no, I want to just obviously honour the people that have put in so much time and effort into um, this kind of stuff that not, I don't just leak it all on my page, basically. Otherwise, I would so tell you. Oh, I loved all of the discussions on um, my last video as well. Thank you for letting me do a QA. and a I love talking like that. My friends will tell you if you ever meet them that when we have conversations, they're usually very deep conversations. We have really sort of like um, meaningful debates and things like that. And I felt really happy that we were like able to have that and everyone was just so like 
it was it was enlightening for both of us. I think you think that often sometimes I come on and I just talk about these things and then you guys go, oh, we like it or we don't like it and, and I just don't care. No, it was enlightening for me. I learned so much as well. I learned so much about how to explain things and articulate my point without alienating people because I really, I really put that at the highest priority of that video um, and leave as many breadths of opportunities of other people's experiences to be explored through what I was saying. So I really loved that too. Um, I've ridden three times this week and um, I've made a lot of pro progress in my confidence. Um, I did trot for the first time in, in four weeks and it was not smooth the first time. Um, it was a lot better the second time. Feels like kind of like I'm starting over again, but I'm very much in that headspace of like, you've just got to get back on the horse. And if I ever get to a point where I'm like, maybe this isn't for me anymore, I'll know. But right now, I'm still very much feeling the same feelings that I had before. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a really good week. Today is sunny and it's warm, hence why I'm in shorts. But I just, I just want you to just take a look at something really quickly because this shirt is making me so happy. This is, um, all I'm saying is you'll know that there are a few brands that I get very, very excited about their collections and seeing their collections and receiving them. Holland Cooper is one of them. Beaufort and Blake is another one. And when I tell you that you watched me see this collection for the first time, <sighs> I love this so much. It has, it's like, you could have this as a fabric in a room. It is so beautiful. It's like a blue gingham with like little roses through the gingham. Can you see that there? That little floral detail. And it just felt so lovely for a day like today where I'm probably gonna want to be outside a little bit. Um, and also I just want to be able to take my shirt off. So I've got top underneath, not flashing the neighbors, but it is beautiful out there. Um, I have Alex and Alex coming over this evening as well, so I want to prep some food. I want to do a fresh uh, loaf of bread. Don't worry, I'm not going to be cooking bread in every single vlog. I will settle into a rhythm. But I want to do some fresh bread for them because they're staying over. And I will probably just do something simple for dinner, like a pasta dish or something like that. I want to bake a cake as well because it's Alex's birthday. I might be biting off more than I can chew though. Um, I've got her present downstairs. So it's gonna be a really, really lovely evening and it's gonna be so wonderful to just have them here, have the girls here, chill, drink some wine, eat some cake, sing happy birthday and just do all of the good stuff. So that is my plan for my Friday, basically. So um, it's good to be back vlogging and not having a Christmassy house, but I will, I do have to show you one thing that Gemma left behind. Hello Petal does it again. Honestly, there is nobody that does it like her when it comes to things that you can purchase online and bring into your own home. She has sourced preserved oak leaves that will last for up to a year in your home that you can arrange, use for displays, use for decor, and they are the perfect, perfect, like muted, green tone look at that now when they arrive they can look a little bit sort of like flat with a little bit of teasing you just kind of bend the leaves back slowly they open up and just loosen and settle in but this is my display for autumn very very pared back she's very demure <laughs> i'm gonna stop doing it i promise but she's very demure she's very mindful she doesn't wear a green cut crease like those other girls, okay? <laughs> um, I'll link these down below because they are on sale now, although I am about to put them on my Instagram stories because they are exquisite. I actually want to order more for the house because I think this is a display on my kitchen table. I just think it's, it literally, my kitchen table looks out over our oak tree. And so this would just be so perfect. Um, I've also asked her to try and do a wreath in this. I'm obsessed. You know how much I love oak trees though. I love oak a lot. How many times can you say oak? Um, I've also paired it with a Holland Cooper candle as well because I just think gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Some old books and our console table, which is from Burgess Reclamation Yard. It's amazing. And I've actually just seen one for our games room on their stories as well. So I'm just, I love it. It's the perfect, perfect color oh i'm over the moon so i'll link that down below at the moment in the uk there well it might not even be in the uk but at the moment where i live 
I think it's to do with the wetness and the sunniness and all of that stuff, but there's a lot of flies and flies give me the ick a little bit, but it is part and parcel of living backing onto farmland in the way that we do. You're also gonna hear the farmer, he's doing something on the land. So he's probably kicking up flies and things like that, but there's a lot going on. So I'm trying to do the most to like keep things nice and clean in here while still being able to cook and do bits and pieces. Now, as you can see up there, we found a home for the bread maker. So it now lives up here where I have my extra Thermomix um, bowls. I've got a spiralizer and things like that. So I'm gonna get that down. I'm gonna get the bread baking. I think I'm gonna do a white loaf today just because the girls are coming and I think white is a little bit naughtier um, and I might use it to try and do some like garlic bread or something like that. We'll see how we get on. I'm being very, very optimistic at this moment in time. Now, I should probably get some steps, but fingers crossed, this doesn't go badly. Oops. Oops. Now, that's the only thing I would say is that all of the recipes for the bread maker come in like a booklet. I would really love for them to have an app so that you don't lose the booklet. Also, I just wanted to show you this. It says autumn's golden days. Magazines are talking about autumn, so I am allowed to talk about autumn and plan for it. This is the English Garden, which is my favorite magazine. I love to sit down and have a good old read. Very autumnal advertising in there, see? See? I'm gonna do the chickens really quickly. Um, give them some corn, collect the eggs. Check how they're doing. Look at these weapons of mass destruction, edging ever closer to my kitchen garden. Not today, ladies, not today. Well, a lot has happened here. It looks like my rhubarb is on its last legs, so I'll probably end up getting that prepared for the next season. Sweet peas are ready to come out. This was not my year for sweet peas. I was very, very excited, um, but it was just not my year for them. It was not my year for a lot of things. It was my year for courgettes and kale. I have so much kale. It's really lovely um nasturtions as well i did a very good nasturtion year and also tomatoes gramps's tomatoes we've got some already good to go so i might actually use some of these on the bread that i make today for the girls and then hopefully there'll still be enough to do chutneys and things like that but look at my kale i don't even know what to do with kale if anyone has any suggestions please let me know because I love the way it looks, <laughs> but I don't know what to do with it. We've got some winter bits and pieces. This is a second sowing of winter. Um, courgettes coming in really well. And then we've got a load of random tomatoes doing their thing over there as well. Sweet peas are needing to come out. And this is a, a little autumn sowing of pak choy as well. Radishes. So yeah, we've got some good little bits and pieces looking very green in the greenhouse as well. And we've got a few crown princes, not as many as I would like. Um, I saw quite a few coming in and then now um, a few of them have died off. So at the moment I can see about two doing well, which is really, really sad for me. Oh. Um, but we do have this big boy, which is doing really well. So yeah. Hello Gwyneth. You're looking so much better after your little broody stint. All of the girls are looking very good. We have it and I think I'm actually going to take a picture of the pages that I use loads because they are important. Um, but yes, I'm going to make basic white bread today. Um, although I'm not going to talk you through it because honestly it is there's just no point unless you've got the same bread maker as me. Um, but loads of people were like, oh you used um, real milk instead of milk powder. Don't worry. Carrie has had this for months and she has done it with um, the, the milk, like normal milk. It was um, because I didn't read the measurements properly. I find a lot of numbers, if they're very small, different sizes, I don't know why, my brain just really struggles to see them and I put way too much water in the mixture. Ali loved it though. He called it crumpet bread. 
but you need to get off there because now I need to clean this because you are not supposed to be on here. That probably means that you need food though, so come on. Come on then. Come on. It's in there. Come on. Basically what I do to start the process is I just get lots of little bowls out and I get all of the ingredients out and then I can just pop, pop them all in, the bread maker can go and I'm not rushing around trying to do anything. So time lapse, I'm gonna do that now. Soon I hope to be at the point where I don't need any guidance, I just know exactly what I need. But for now, skimmed milk powder. Bread is now in the bread maker, so that's one thing ticked off my list. Now we are moving on to the cake. Unfortunately, I've only real just realized I've only got self-raising white gluten-free flour, which is annoying, but never mind. Um, I'll turn that into a cake. I've also got lemons from the greenhouse. I think this one is from the greenhouse. I can't remember if this one is from the greenhouse or not, but we have lemons, we have eggs from the hens and ingredients to go. The dough is rising and the cake is cooling. What else is cooling is the temperature. So the shirt is back on now, the sun has gone in. I'm gonna have a quick tidy up, um, blitz the kitchen so that everything can cool and then I can make stuff later. I need to do the dishwasher, empty the dishwasher. All that good stuff. Oh, also, I forgot to tell you, you know I bought the Purdy and Fig um, bits and pieces from Amazon. Well, they actually contacted me and let me know that they've had a rebrand since then. I just found this stuff on Amazon um, and they actually had autumn scents. Oh wow, so they do their own. Oh my gosh, this is so me. It is unreal. So amber bottle, gold, purdy and fig. I'm obsessed. What are the fragrances? So we have lavender and chamomile, patchouli and cedarwood, juniper and cardamom. Oh wow. What one am I gonna use? Lavender and chamomile. Oh, it's literally like essential oils. It's just fantastic. Oh. Patchouli and cedarwood. I think I'm going to go with patchouli and cedarwood for now. I love the rebrand and they do green purdy and fig cloths. I'm sorry. We are a match made in heaven. Oh. So step one, pour the concentration into the bottle and fill to the neck. Spray onto surfaces. Well, seeing as we need to do this surface, let's do it. So patchouli and cedarwood. Let's do it. I'm not going to use a fresh cloth, but let's go for it. Oh, Ali's going to love this. <laughs> oh, it smells incredible. Exactly how I would want my kitchen to smell. Oh, unreal. Oh, wow. This is just gorgeous. Oh, not only have we got the smell of bread, the smell of cake, but also essential oils. I'm going to use this to blitz my kitchen now.
Oh my goodness, this smells incredible. And the cake has been drizzled and is just cooling. So my next thing to do, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna refresh these because they had some little cosmos flowers in there just to give it a really deep red color for when we were doing the autumn shoot. What I'm gonna do is grab some anemones and just give it a refresh because obviously it's a birthday. So gotta make the tablescape look lovely. Um, so I'm gonna add some fresh water, add a few little flowers just to spritz it up a little bit and see how it looks. Now these are probably my most prolific anemones, even though I actually didn't think these were gonna come up this year because as you can see, a lot of them have almost like been devoured. I don't quite know what happened there. I'm gonna to speak to um, our gardener, see if he knows. Now these probably won't last very long, but there's still loads to come in. So I think I'm gonna take a few and pop these in the bud vases and see how they do. I'm actually very impressed with how this has turned out because the burgundy from the sort of berries look really, really nice on this. And then the white from the anemones just freshens it up. So we've got the ivy as well. Um, this is so good. So these are the Re Rebecca Masala bud vases that we just refreshed the other day. There's thistles, anemones. It's just, honestly, it, it feels so seasonal. So I'm gonna get the table set and by then hopefully the bread will be done. We have Oh, that is a perfect white loaf. Oh my goodness, look at the dome on top. This is the best I've done. <gasps> wow, I am so impressed with myself. I am also mid-decorating the birthday cake, although these candles are little leaning towers of Pisa at the moment, but I am decorating with little violas from the garden and leaves. And I think that looks lovely. It's my lemon drizzle cake, so um, it always kind of looks the same, but it tastes good. It's just not one of those really statuesque birthday cakes. <laughs> bread, bread, wine. Do, do, stay close to me. Do, 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 do. Oh, that is hot tamale. That is blooming incredible. Don't mind if I say so myself. What I'm doing for these leaves, I'm just cutting the tips off and then hiding them underneath so they aren't quite so prominent, I would say. This is the cutest setup ever. Oh my gosh. Bread is cooling nicely. It looks so lovely. Oh, I love it when I can like reuse things and make them look lovely. I love how this tablescape was just here and just giving it a bit of a freshness instantly changes how everything looks. I'm so happy. Oh, now before the girls get here, obviously I have to try the bread and this is, oh my goodness. Now, lots of you said about having our honey on it. I can confirm that the honey on the bread was amazing, but I'm not gonna have that now. Because it's white bread, I'm just gonna have some good salted butter and enjoy lashings of that on my freshly warm, home-baked bread. And then, I'm gonna run down to the kitchen garden, grab a courgette to make some pasta sauce, because that's what we're having for dinner because I don't have any time to do anything else. Oh my goodness. We have two fresh courgettes, although this one is definitely almost a marrow now. Um, this one I will use for chutney. Great, loads of sustenance to turn into many, many jars of chutney for gifting this year. And then this one I will use for the pasta sauce tonight. Still a bit bigger than I would have hoped, but, um, Doing well. Birthday girl <laughs> Happy Regine, happy Alex. Hey, Thank you. No baby boobies though. No, I can't. Why not? I can't. I'm just having <laughs> Someone's definitely got more pasta. Do you want, I'll have that one. You no, have this I'm, one. I'm fine with it. No, 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 you have this one. No, 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 no
that. Um, you've got wine. You've both got wine. Oh. So what, what veggies do we have in here? Courgette. Courgette. Tomatoes. Um, herbs. And then carrots. Sadly, I have no carrots this year. Oh. Did the bunnies eat them? No, the chickens. <laughs> Yeah, actually, that's a very good point. Like, just know. because. Can you hold the, the box up so that we can just show how cute you are? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, my cheeks are vibrating. Hurry up and take. Why are you like this? Oh, this is cute. Wait, let's do the cheese. Okay, so. Not the vibe. I feel like this is the better angle. I have actually got the better right angle. <laughs> Hurry the f up! Why are I just love that the big um, marrow is just sitting <laughs> behind you as well. Hold on, wait, let me just get this right. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, this is a photo shoot. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I love that. Your skin looks lovely. And it's your turn up. Because I'm finally on sex again. Okay, we've had dinner and we've done the cake and I love that I put three bottles of wine in thinking that that was very presumptuous and we are about to head on to the third bottle. Well, to be fair, we've actually got a little amount left but we are playing heads up at the moment. Am I opening the third bottle? Why not? Well, you've left me with nothing. So True. <laughs> Without using any lyrics, only humming. Let's do a humming game. Yeah. Oh yeah, that would be good. Oh, don't wait. I'm passed. missing this one. I've got to do the what bottle of wine. Okay. Oh. Oh, I know this one. Go on, you do it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 DJ. I don't know that one. 
I'll be back. Oh, what's his name? Oh, fuck. <laughs> He's Get to the chopper. <laughs> I know. Oh, this was Snigger. Yay, yes. yes. well done. Uh, it's an area in New York, but it's got a really broad. Johnny. <laughs> well, I'm from the area. Alfonso. What's that? Hey, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Yeah, that area. Over the bri bridge. Over the bridge. Over the bridge. We like coffee. Brooklyn. Oh. You're just cheating, you cheat. <laughs> I'm not playing with her anymore. <laughs> She's so you're, bad. You're you, not a guesser. You're terrible. You're very good at impressions. <laughs> Thanks. Maybe I should do the memes one on you. What am I doing? Superstar. I don't know who the superstar is. Was so he's short, name? he's fat. Danny DeVito. Yes! <laughs> um, she did a song with Justin Timberlake and he revealed her boob. Janet Jackson. Yes. <laughs> um, was married to Ashton Kutcher. Older. Demi Moore. Yeah. Why aren't you so good at Don't this? know who that is. Um, keep bleeding. Keanu Lewis. Lewis. Yes. Um, was dating Rihanna. Is that Rocky? But no, is. before him. Chris, Chris Brown. No. Oh. <laughs> um. <coughs> Not too far. Yes. Can you help your teammate guess the word in the card without it seeing one? Body. For our next chance, try out using it without using it. I think that's for kids. Oh. Good morning, everyone. That was the most fun evening. We had such a good time. Sorry, I've still got all my bits and pieces um, left out from before such a fun night i feel like when you don't see like certain groups of friends for a long time and then you get together honestly like you're just howling it was so much fun and i actually rem remembered to vlog a few different bits so that's good and it is a day full of friends this weekend <laughs> it is a day full of friends this weekend it is a weekend full of friends this weekend um because carrie and i are spending today together um, and I think we're gonna like go for a walk or something like that, chill out, drink wine, do all of the stuff. Cause I actually haven't had any sorts of like sociable weekends other than the wedding in quite a while. Um, so I'm making up for lost time basically. I've done my hair in my favorite hairstyle at the moment. I don't know if you know, but I can't do um, French plaits, but I've kind of, come up with this sort of, I think I googled like how do you make your hair look like it's in a French plait without being able to do it and there was something about like doing the topsy tails and so that's kind of what I've done but I do it a bit differently because I section my hair into three sections and I leave the middle bit long so you still get the length of your hair because I don't want all my hair to go short because it's all like up in the style and then I use the side bits to create three topsy tails that kind of go into each other, really make it quite messy as well. And then in the actual ponytail itself, just do one topsy tail with all of the hair in. It's probably a really bad description, and I should just show you that the messier the better. The only thing I'm trying to decide is what to put in the end of it, because at the moment, I've just got a little clear um, bobble, but I don't think it looks very nice, but I also don't want to go for one of my gold ones. I feel like the gold one is a little bit too elevated. I've got this little tortoise shell hair bubble. I think I got this from Amazon and um, I could try this instead. That is not the way that you do it though, Lydia. What do you think? Does that look alright? I keep seeing that hair accessories are like the big thing for this season, but I think that you've got to like get the balance right. But anyway, I need to choose my outfit for today in terms of like what I'm wearing um, to go on a walk with. So am I gonna wear shorts? Am I gonna wear trousers? I don't know, this is always like a pretty good outfit to walk in. But I have had the most wonderful morning. You can hear the sounds probably of Frank Sinatra playing throughout the house at the moment and I've woken up I had a bit of a lay-in I've gone down to the chickens I've collected the eggs 
And you know when you're just sort of like, hold on, let me turn it down because I will get a copyright strike. But you know when you're like, I actually can't believe the life that I've like curated for myself. And I just feel, I felt like I was waking up in a storybook. It was so autumnal this morning. It was like, um, like misty and dark. I lit a candle. It wasn't even an expensive candle. It's just a two pound candle. And there's fresh bread on the island. There's fresh cake. And I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, it really is, life is what you make of it. Like you have to put in so much effort on a daily basis to like live a lovely life and I, I, it fascinates me how much you get out when you put so much in. I just had the loveliest morning. Honestly, I felt like I was in a storybook. Very lovely light today. Goodness me. Look at this view. Wow. Oh, you little baby turnip. <laughs> So just in case anyone is concerned about where we are walking, um, on this field in particular, this is a public footpath, but this has been sown with turnips and the turnips are feed for the sheep. So the sheep will be gradually let into this field and allowed to graze on this. So it's not going for human consumption or anything like that. It's um, just literally going to be munched up and spat back out essentially to fertilize the the field ready for next year so yeah but l this I think I'm not that you care about that. why because i don't know a single human being that still eats turnips no it's true actually i did contemplate growing them there's so much stuff that you grow that never gets eaten i'm honestly i treat my vegetables with more like more precious than my hermes bags i can't bear I can't eat them. I can't. I'm so worried I'm going to run out. And they look so beautiful in the veg beds as well. Gosh, it's all of a sudden really warm. What's going on? It was freezing cold earlier. Perfect this time. Well, come on, you two. I realise we haven't oh, shown no, up. This is like embarrassing. No, it's not. This is what best friends do. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you wearing? Fairfax and Tavor. The most comfortable walking boots of all time. Yeah, you reckon these are more comfortable than Dewberries, right? But uh, country mile. I need to. I need to. Uh, you have to. You do have to like bed them in. I think that's with any sort of walking boot, yeah. though. I just have to go through the because mine have obviously got holes in now, so I do need to no, swap it, over. I think. Actually, in fairness, I'd say these weren't as bad to bed in as Dewberries. Interesting. But okay. like, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a commitment bedding them in. But once they're in, oh. Okay. Crack. Uh, Beaufort Blake. Good choice. Good choice. On brand. Me and M. Nice. Nice. Lovely. No idea. The backpack is Sky Spur. Amazon. Ah. Perfect. I'm wearing Dewberry boots that probably I should replace. Um, which I think actually my next dog walk, you heard it here first, I'm going to swap over to my Fairfax and Favours and just start the process before winter because oh, these won't see me through winter. Yeah, I love it. Also, the oh, thing I love about these, they're entire, they're fully waterproof like um, Dewberries, but even when you unzip them, fully waterproof oh, zip things, wow. so you've got more wiggle room to get your foot in. Yeah, because this is honestly, like I'm not lying about how bad my boots are. That is a hole on both sides. Um, and actually in the um, yeah. rubber. So yes, but my, I'm a fan of these. Yeah, these are so good, aren't they? These are um, Holland Cooper, and I really, really like the shape of these, like the cut of these shorts. They also do them in green, but I think this is a good basic. Um, and then I've got a Beaufort and Blake shirt. I've stolen my husband's um, scarf, because we are sharing scarves this season, and he's taken the one that we actually bought together, which I was going to wear. Have you ever heard about that, <sighs> sharing scarves? I don't know where this one's from. This is Mountain Warehouse, isn't it? Mountain Yes, and my belt is jigsaw. So yeah, perfect. Get me some wine. Sheepies. Oh. Rainbow sheep. <laughs> I thought the colours were like as they mounted um, and rubbed, and therefore you knew who the father was. <laughs> and if that's the case. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I actually didn't realise how much I dropped. I feel like I need to clean that up because that was actually really clean. That's so bad. You are such oh, a troll. Oh, look at that. 
you're so messy. Whereas me, just as bad. <laughs> well, actually, not as bad. Not as bad. I but actually. You really are. Bad. You're a messy eater. I did not realise how much I actually drank. So if if anyone doesn't know, me, Carrie's lovely dad, has a Jim Grayson special whereby you buy crisps. It has to be salt vinegar. Even though yeah. Jim doesn't do it. No, no, no. Jim doesn't do salt vinegar. It's always salt, it's always salted for the Jim Grayson special. But um, then you have to have plain salted nuts and then you have to put them inside the bag of the crisps and you have to shake them up and you have to crush the crisps before you then open the packet and share it with everyone. But um, this is the result of Lydia doing the Jim Grayson special. Come on, then. <laughs> Peanuts behind you. Yeah. <laughs> the top button, you're basically down to your belly button anyway, showing off your Patrick Malucci boobies. <laughs> so we're now here, and our wine walk today has been a grand total of about three kilometres. <laughs> no, wait. It's been a, a, a circular mile. Of, <laughs> a circular mile of four pubs, three pubs. <laughs> it smells onion. It does smell very oniony. Why do I smell onion really badly? <laughs> all right, from now on YouTube, you get rear end melon. <laughs> With all her reflectors crazy. on her backpack looking like a flipping cool gift. <laughs> you, like you look like the safety hedgehog. <laughs> Take it away. 